Hello everybody, Doug Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to go ahead and rank the Hearthstone classes for the Angoro Arena uh, from best to worst. So this is the classes as they stand right now, and their drafting power, their odds to get a high win streak, uh, and just generally be good classes to play in Arena. So at the top of the list, we of course have Mage. If you look at the cards that Mage has gotten inside of the Angoro Arena, it's very easy to see why that's the case. Archaeologist, an amazing card if you have any secrets in your deck. Meteor, a great clear, and now that epics show up a lot more often, you can actually draft sometimes one, two Meteors pretty easily in addition to your Flame Strikes. And then other solid cards like Steam Surger and of course Primordial Glyph just gives Mage a lot of these key cards which are very, very powerful in Arena. And uh, Mage pretty easily sits at the top when uh, you already have cards like uh, Firelands Portal and Flame Strike. Mage is just really strong. The other day I was able to go 12 and 0 with Mage, uh, and there were only actually two fights that entire run, which were even remotely giving me a challenge. Um, and that's just showing the power of Mage. Uh, okay, next up, and by the way, if you want to watch that video, it's the last one on my channel. But next up. I would say Paladin is very, very strong in the arena as well, so I put it at number two. Um, of course, legendaries show up more often, so you can get some Keeper Terum on uh, occasion. Spike Ridged Steed, just an amazing card, Constructed or Arena. Uh, other solid picks like Vine Cleaver, Hydrologist, even Lost in the Jungle. But then um, a new three drop that they added, which is also very good in Constructed, the Stonehill Defender. You can pick up quite often inside of Arena, and I would say out of all the classes, it is definitely best inside of Paladin. An amazing pick up, sometimes being able to discover Tyrians or additional Sunkeeper Tyrians, uh, just makes that control or even tempo kind of playstyle really strong in a Paladin Arena, so easily makes the number two. And I would follow that up with Rogue at number three. I got a couple decent cards, Hallucination, being able to discover cards from the class, not your opponent's deck. Invenom Weapon, kind of like uh, two assassinates in one, trading HP instead of uh, cards. Uh, Vile Spine Slayer, a very good tempo card, being able to take out any big guy your opponent plays. In terms of value, if you can churn six, maybe Hallucination into Vile Spine Slayer, that is an, an incredibly powerful play. And even cards like Mimic Bot are pretty good to pick up, basically being able to draw two, sort of like an Arcane Intellect. Um, so yeah, Rogue has been pretty strong in general, um, and these cards kind of support Rogue in this set too, so it's a pretty solid number three, especially if you like playing the tempo playstyle, where you just try to push your opponent out of the game by hitting them over and over again each turn. Uh, number four, I would actually put Priest at... Now this may be uh, a little bit more questionable than the other ones, but Free From Amber is an incredibly powerful card to pick up in a Priest Arena. Uh, Tortolan Shield, uh, Shalvazer, also pretty strong, a nice 4 mana 2-6 taunt that buffs a random minion, plus 1, plus 1. Radiant Elemental, a decent 2 drop, Crystalline Oracle, a decent 1 drop, and uh, you can kind of see if you grab a few of these cards, playing a Elemental Priest is not beyond the realms of possibility. Shadow Vision's also pretty good if you only have a few spells in your deck, so if you draft one, uh, let's say, Dragonfire Potion, you can always Shadow Visions into a second one as you need it. So, uh, Priest, uh, maybe not too many insane cards, but Free From Amber really uh, kind of carries it in this set. Okay, so number five, that would probably be Shaman. Um, Shaman's got a lot of pretty good elemental cards. You can't always do the elemental synergy, of course. Uh, but cards like Stone Sentinel, Hot Spring Guardian, Volcano, uh, just pretty solid arena cards in general. Um, Spirit Echo, also not too bad. And in general, Shaman has just been a pretty good class to take to arena, or at least decent. I mean, uh, since we're at number 5, it's middle of the road here. Um, what it lost a lot of is the ability for Jades to be relevant inside of arena. And you never really wanted to draft around Jades, but if you could get cards like the Jade Lightning, that would be way better than Tidal Surge most cases. So uh, some of these other cards like Air Elemental, Fire Plume, Har Harbinger, and Tidal Surge are actually really weak. And I mean, uh, Primal Fin Totem, not too bad. Um, so Shamans, they've still got weapons, they can still draft Hexes, uh, still can grab Lightning Storms or Maelstrom Portals, so they've got some good tools in there. But... Um, 
I'm not going to be super strong without uh, having the, like constructed synergy like Evolve or Bloodlust or anything like that. Just kind of meh. Um, so let's move on to number six, which I think I would put at Hunter. So Hunter has Crackling Razor, an amazing card, uh, both in Arena and Constructed. Good one drops like Jeweled Macaw and uh, the one from last set, the Tabby Cat. If you can get those kind of commons and put them in your deck, uh, you'll have a good early game. So the potential for Hunter to kind of um, have some early mid-game plays uh, is pretty strong. So Hunter can be a more aggressive deck in Arena. Dino Nancy, uh, also a pretty decent one to pick up, because um, a lot of Arena games often come down to vi uh, like just pure value. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Jewel Via Warden, of course, going to be another good card to grab if you do happen to have a lot of one drops in your deck. So being able to play a little bit more aggressively than some of these other decks, uh, you can get some pretty decent results if you were to just kind of go aggressive in a uh, Hunter Arena, which is what Hunter does best usually. So, uh, number seven, uh, Druid. So, the problem with Druid is it's does, it doesn't really have that many amazing cards this set. So, like, Tortolan Forager, sure, it's a 2-2 that draws a card that's pretty good. Um, a lot of these, like, three mana, five mana, five attack minions, they're all built around this Jungle Giants thing, which actually wasn't that good this set. And, of course, you're not going to draft Jungle Giants in Arena. Um, so, what you have left is, like... A bunch of pretty average minions. Um, Earth and Scales, decent. Living Mana, probably one of the better cards you can get, but also not as good when you're not playing a strictly aggro deck. And then cards like Evolving Spores, Shell Shifter, just not really good enough. So Druid's got a lot of meh right now, and it's not like you're going to be playing a Giant Anaconda deck. Or in most cases, you shouldn't be trying to draft Giant Anaconda, because that is very specific to this Jungle Giants deck. And uh, without that synergy, these kind of cards aren't that great. I mean, how good is a 3-mana 5-1 that sometimes adapts? It's like a Magma Rager that sometimes you can get a plus 1, plus 1, or sometimes you can get a Divine Shield on. It's not good enough for Constructed, and it's not that great in Arena either, so Druid's kind of weak. Yeah, I mean, you can get some of the classic cards like Innervate or Wild Growth and just kind of play a standard Druid, but nothing really special there. And next, I would put it at uh, Warlock. So Warlock doesn't really have anything special uh, this set when it comes to Arena drafting. Cards like Lakari Fellhound absolutely suck in Arena. You would never want to discard two just to get a big taunt. Feeding time, very mediocre, kind of like a bad uh, implosion, which is no longer in rotation. Uh, Chittering Tunnel may be one of the better cards, in a way, um, though it, it can easily be too greedy. It hasn't been good enough for Constructed, but I think sometimes I would pick this up if I happen to draft. Um, and then cards like Tar Lurker, yeah, sure, they're fine, like a 5-mana 4-7 taunt, but has no offensive power, so in a lot of ways, cards like a Nesting Rock, which we can go over here, are just going to strictly be better. So, like, you don't even need to go for the class cards because the class cards kind of suck. And things like Cruel Dinomancer, odds of you actually being able to pull off that synergy with, like, a Soulfire and a non-constructed deck are very low. So the only thing keeping Warlock from being ninth place is the fact that its hero power is way better than Warriors. We can go take a look at now at the number nine place. If a warrior happened to have, like, the quest in Arena, which I don't even think you can get offered quests uh, as a legendary in Arena. I haven't seen it happen to me yet. Um, but yeah, if you could get this and you could pull it off in Arena, sure, that would be great, because it's like, well, you can play the control long game with warrior. But as warrior stands right now, you have a really useless hero power. I mean, sure, the armor can be good if you have shield slams, or if you're really trying to fight off the aggro decks, but almost every deck you go up against an arena right now is going to be kind of a mid-game control tempo deck, and that health isn't going to do you any good because your opponents are going to be trading their minions off until they can just get free damage on your face. Um, so, like, 8 times out of 10, that 2 extra health isn't going to help you. Um, and then the minions you have available are eh, not too bad. I mean, Dire Horn, Hatchling, sure, Onary, Dire Horn, they're okay. Farlord is a pretty big body, so that's actually not bad. Um, but just having a few decent minions does not make up for the fact that the hero power is pretty useless. Um, and you don't really have a lot of utility cards to like make Warrior really worth playing in a current arena draft. So while you can make any of the classes work, uh, Warrior and Warlock definitely at the weakest. Mage, 
insanely powerful now. Um, hopefully next set that'll change a little bit because Mage is usually one of the stronger classes. It has a great hero power for Arena. So once again, the uh, list here is Mage at the top, Paladin, Rogue, Priest, Shaman, Hunter, Druid, Warlock, and then Warrior. So I've been Dark Skeleton. Uh, thanks for watching this video on my opinion. If you disagree with me or if you agree with me, feel free to leave a comment down below. But for now, I will see you guys in my future video content.